We've just learned that in principle, delta T, this amount of supercooling for some things like going from a liquid to a solid can be hundreds of degrees. You can see things happening hundreds of degrees further away from what you would expect from a thermodynamics perspective. But in practice, it's actually only a couple of degrees. It's only several degrees below. So what's the difference? The difference is homogeneous versus heterogeneous nucleation, right? In the previous section, what we calculated was R star and delta G star for homogeneous nucleation. And that assumed, again, that a little um, nucleus occurred in the bulk of a material, right? So here's your particle that forms in the bulk of a material. Now that's homogeneous nucleation. Another possibility is this. What if your solid forms along the edge here, right? How does that change things, right? That changes things uh, pretty dramatically, actually. Let's zoom in on the surface there. The surface looks like this. So we'll call this an interface. Here's our solid that's forming along there, okay? Now, all along there, we have the following surface energies. You've got one surface energy acting right here. We'll call this the surface energy between the solid and the liquid. So gamma SL between the solid and the liquid. You've also got a surface energy right here. That's going to be the surface energy between the interface and the liquid, gamma IL. And then you've got a so surface energy right there, SI between the solid and the interface, gamma SI. And depending on what these values are, you can end up with different contact angles. So what's a contact angle? This angle right there is our contact angle. Um, you've probably seen examples of this, like a little droplets of water on Gore-Tex beat up and they're like a perfect little sphere. So water on Gore-Tex looks like this, where the contact angle is is really high. Or you re have really hydrophilic materials where the contact angle is really low and that droplet gets spread way out, right? So depending on these surface energies, this uh, the volume of your solid that's forming versus its surface area can be really different than what we saw previously. Remember before the surface area was really easy. It's just the surface area of a sphere. This area around it, that was what we needed. Surface area times our surface energy, right? But here, the ratio of volume to surface energy is really different, right? It's a very different thing. So let's go ahead and calculate that. All right, what we need to do is modify our delta G star expression. Actually, it's kind of surprising. The R star expression does not change when you take into account um, heterogeneous nucleation. Instead, delta G star changes, and it looks the exact same as before, except it has this extra term right there. S is a function of theta. And S is a function of theta mathematically. If you know the contact angle, you could plug these things in. But really what it is, it's a number between 0 and 1. Right? It's some number between 0 and 1. So whatever your activation energy was before, it just got reduced right, by some fraction. Okay? And the exact amount you'd have to calculate from the geometry of your sample if you knew the contact angle. Right? So why does this lead to less undercooling for heterogeneous nucleation? Okay? Well, think what it does to our energy versus radius diagram. Again, this is the nucleus size, R, and this is our change in the Gibbs free energy of our system. Here's what we have happening. With regular homogeneous nucleation, we had this happening, right? And there existed an R star value, and there existed a delta G star value, an activation energy for homogeneous nucleation. But for heterogeneous nucleation, what we see is this. Right? They both exhibit the same exact R star. But look at how different delta G star is, a much lower activation energy. Delta G star for heterogeneous nucleation is far lower. Right? So very different um, R star, very different activation energies for these two different processes. And therefore, with one being dramatically lower than the other, you're going to get um, it dominating. 
And so in reality, while homogeneous can happen, and you can make conditions occur where you see homogeneous nucleation, heterogeneous nucleation is much more likely to happen because it has a smaller activation energy, right? There's a smaller energy barrier preventing it from happening, okay? So how would this change things like our nucleation rate plots from before? Well, our nucleation rate plots from before were both done as a function of temperature. There's T alpha beta, where you expect the transition to occur. If you have homogeneous nucleation versus heterogeneous nucleation, heterogeneous nucleation is going to look like this, whereas homogeneous nucleation is going to look like, right? Heterogeneous nucleation is going to happen at a much smaller amount of undercooling. Remember, the distance below this y-axis, this is the amount of supercooling that's taking place for your system.